Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. As you can see, yes, I am doing a talking head video today, but I'm working on another video that should be dropping tomorrow. Then I'll have a normal video coming Wednesday. So I've got a lot of content coming this week, starting with some big stuff today. First, I have terrible news, new GPUs, 12th gen gets a massive boost in performance, we finally get to see Intel's ARC GPUs, and AMD's MCM RX 7000 GPUs are on the way. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today is the terrible news. This story originally comes from 3dcenter.org, and if you've been following the channel for any amount of time, you know that I've covered 3dcenter.org for a little while now, and they've effectively been documenting the GPU prices pretty much since the newest series of GPUs have gone live. And we obviously know that GPU prices have been absolutely absurd. It's been either extremely hard to find them, or the prices have been through the roof. And that is thanks to numerous things from COVID causing shortages, from massive demand from gamers, mostly because of the thing that shall not be named. I shouldn't have said COVID. I'm just kidding. That's just a little thing from the channel from a little while back. But regardless, things have not been good. You can see it had actually gotten to astronomical heights back in May before, thank goodness, tumbling back down. And then things actually looked to finally be moving down further until we reached mid-July, where we actually saw AMD's GPUs started to trend back upwards before we really even got anywhere near MSRP. Now, luckily, Nvidia's cards were still trending down, until around the end of August, where we saw they started to trend up yet again. And then through the months, things have continuously gotten worse until this month, AMD has reached a level of over 200% over MSRP for their GPUs. If we actually go back, we can see that that is actually right at the worst it's ever been, at least for AMD. Of course, Nvidia got to absolutely absurd levels, but unfortunately, Nvidia is still trending upwards as well at 188% of MSRP. But with that said, maybe, just maybe, today's next story can help with that. We have a report from Hong Xing, who I actually believe was someone who called pretty much all of the 3000 cards before they were launched, so definitely someone to listen to, or at least someone that we know has been accurate in the past. Anyway, first up, as you can see, we have an RTX 2060 12 gigabyte, and yes, that was not a typo, it's the 2060, not 3060, which if we actually go back here, we saw a little bit of a report a little while back stating that Nvidia was gonna be releasing a 12 gigabyte 2060 model in Q1 to tackle GPU availability issues. Fortunately, at least according to this Twitter user, it is actually coming soon, it's set to be on shelf by 12.7. Not only that, but Nvidia is apparently planning to announce the 3070 Ti 16GB and 12GB 3080 on the same day with availability being in January, specifically January 11th. So Nvidia is set to release new GPUs or not so new GPUs, but hopefully they will be able to get a ton out and potentially help with the shortage. Moving on, we have a pretty interesting story that originally comes from a product manager from Lenovo China. Either way, we actually get to see some performance with Intel's Maximum Turbo Boost, specifically Maximum Turbo Power Mode. And before I get to that, this actually brings me to something fairly interesting that Intel is doing. They're gonna be changing their naming convention for TDP, PL2 we used to say, you know, PL1, PL2, and then if you've been following hardware for a little while now, you know that when Intel says TDP, they're only referring to TDP while at base frequency. Well, now they are actually set to change that naming convention to processor base power and PL2 to the maximum turbo power. And I will say that I actually kind of appreciate that 
just because it at least seems to be more honest to say, hey, this is the kind of power draw that you can expect. Or I, I say power draw, I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, TDP actually references the wattage that has to be dissipated by the cooler. And I do understand that, but it is one thing that we're able to kind of base things on to at least give us an idea or a reference to determine how much power draw a CPU gets. Either way, it is really nice to see Intel getting, I guess you could say a little bit more honest about this because it specifically says the base power and then the maximum turbo power either way when we go back you can see the kind of performance that you get when you use pl2 or the new naming scheme being maximum turbo power and as you can see with pl2 or maximum turbo power we're looking at 241 watts which is obviously significantly more than the 125 watts base power or what they originally called tdp either way with that said the performance massively increases we can see right here the 12700k goes from 6689 to 8677 12600k actually doesn't get a huge difference but when we move up to the 12,900K, the difference becomes fairly staggering. We are talking 7,492 to 10,180, a whopping 36% increase in performance. Now, with that said, I also wanted to really quickly touch on, I know I've had some people discussing this, but basically the numbers that Intel kind of shared with their 12th gen CPUs seem to have been done before AMD released their fix for Ryzen CPUs with Windows 11, which means the difference in performance may not be nearly as drastic as Intel tried to show us. With that said, if we look here, I believe it still does not beat a stock 5950X. I think it's a few hundred points lower, but once again, the 12,900K is significantly cheaper than the 5950X. So the fact that it gets anywhere near it is pretty impressive. And of course, if you're interested in picking up a 12th gen CPU or the new Z690 motherboards, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Their affiliate links helps the channel out, but it doesn't cost you anything more. And moving on, we have some of the first, or actually the first images of the reference design for Intel's upcoming ARC GPUs. If you've been following the channel, you know that we actually saw from Moore's Law is Dead some scenes that were rendered so they weren't real based on what he'd heard the card looked like. And you can see those images right here. But if we go to the news story, Moore's Law is Dead actually has some real images of the card. And first up, you'll notice that it is almost identical except for the fact that the Intel logo is Intel's new logo, which I really think was kind of the one thing that looked a little bit off with the other one. Intel obviously has a new logo now, and it would be odd for them to put their older logo on their upcoming GPUs. Either way, this is set to be the card, or at least one of the final reference designs that Intel is working on, but it definitely seems like this is probably gonna be the one that they end up releasing. Don't forget that Intel officially had a show a little while back where they used drones to make images and they showed a card that looked very similar to this one. So it probably is the actual final design. Anyway, you can see here that it does have one eight and one six pin connector. It's silver, has their new logo, Honestly, it looks pretty much identical to the renders. Not only that, but they actually showed off the smaller 128 EU GPU. And as you can see, it's a fairly small design, looks pretty similar to that DG1 GPU that they showed off a little while back. Both cards do look fairly nice, and let's just say I'm excited. And lastly for today, we have a new post from leaker Greymon55. And this is some really exciting stuff. He specifically said next generation flagship graphics card has been taped out. And basically what that means, if you can see right here, video cards claims that he is, which I think it's pretty obvious, referring to Navi 31. Remember that Navi 31 is set to be AMD's next gen or probably likely gonna be called the RX 7000 series of GPUs. And Navi 31 is going to be the highest in card. Really, what's so exciting about this is that it's set to be the first MCM GPU for consumers, or in this case, gamers. 
Remember that MCM or multi-chip module GPUs basically combine multiple GPUs into one for much better yield rates and easy scalability. And Graymon55 says next-gen flagship cards have been taped out. And what that actually means, you can see it right here, the tape out process is an important step. Let's see, it says tape out means that the design has been finished. Now there can be some slight tweaks based on bugs and things like that, but overall that means AMD is done with their next gen multi-chip module GPUs. And from what we've seen so far, it looks like their flagship Navi 31 is set to come with a whopping 15,360 cores. And of course, that's absolutely insane, though there is a chance that they basically use like, let's say the uh, 7900 XT could be slightly cut down from that. But to be honest, anything anywhere near it is unbelievable. So yeah. That basically does it for today. Really exciting stuff, but also definitely really upsetting, especially when we're talking GPU prices. But either way, I do hope you liked the video and let me know, what are you most excited for? Intel's first jump at GPUs or the first ever MCM consumer GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.